Good morning, everyone. Thank you for organizing this conference and for choosing our presentation. We are very excited to be, very excited to be here and to share our findings on the role of public policy in the sexual and couple lives of men and women with disabilities in France. Uh, we are two early career researchers in sociology working on disability and gender in life course perspe perspective. Uh, I, I am currently conducting a doctoral research project on the sexual and couple life of individuals with cerebral palsy or muscular dystrophy. In contrast, Celia's doctoral and postdoctoral research has explored various topics related to disability-related inequalities and their implications for public policy, focusing on people with visual impairments or specific learning difficulties. Our project, to conduct, uh, our project is to conduct a joint analysis uh, and it's based on three initial observations. First, in many countries, including France, uh, public policies targeting individuals with disability do not make any reference to gender. They are implicitly assumed to be gender neutral. In practice, this may not necessarily be the case but there is little evidence on the subject. Second, there are particularly few studies that examine the influence of public policy on intimate and bodily aspects of the lives of people with disabilities, such as this, their experiences related to sexuality and couple relationships. The only discussions of these topics pertain to moral panics within the public debate particularly concerning the question of sexual assistance. The broader issue of bodywork has not re yet received substantial attention in disability research on public policies. Third, and lastly, disability policies are frequently approached solely from the perspective of civil rights. Indeed, social protection policies have been criticized for adopting a medical model of disability as they tend to provide individual assistance rather than addressing broader social structures. However, social policies, including welfare benefits, can play a crucial role in enabling people with disabilities to carry out daily activities and, in turn, realize their human rights. So, at the intersection of these three issues, we address the following question. To what extent can French social policies, such as disability-related social minimums or disability compensation, uh, alleviate obstacles in the sexual and couple lives of individuals who have grown up with disabilities, considering gender? We are comparing two types of social protection policies aimed at people with disabilities, each with a different rational. The adult disability benefits, known as Allocation aux adultes handicapés, or AAH in French, is a welfare benefit designed for adults over 20 who have a medical recognition of a certain level of incapacity. It has existed in France since 1933, and this benefit is mean-tested, meaning that individuals with disability are eligible only if the annual amount uh, of income falls below a certain threshold, which is approximately uh, 12,000 euros per year in order to receive the full amount of the benefits. The purpose of this program is to provide a minimum income to individuals who face significant work limitations resulting in lower income. And in this year, the full, um, the full amount of individuals uh, with their children is approximately um, 970 euros per month. In contrast, the disability compensation benefits, known as Prestation de Compensation du Handicap, or PCH in French, is designed as a universal benefit, uh, meaning it's not mintisted. It was established in 2005 to cover some of the expenses associated with disabilities, such as technical equipment and human assistance, and the aim is to offset the, ad the additional costs arising from disability based on an individual assessment of the person's compensation needs. 
For human assistance, uh, reimbursements can reach up to 100%. And uh, there are three main options available, either direct employment uh, of a third party, utilization of an accredited service, or compensation for a family caregiver. Our analysis is based on 81 biographical interviews from two distinct studies. The first cop corpus comprises interviews with 37 individuals with early onset impairments conducted by Celia as part of her PhD research. She conducted interviews with 20 individuals with visual impairments and 17 individuals with specific learning difficulties. The second corpus includes interviews with 44 individuals uh, conducted by me for my, my PhD research. I conducted interviews with 14 individuals with cere cerebral palsy, so eight men and six women, and also uh, 18, uh, 18 individuals with muscular dystrophy, seven men and 11 women, and uh, I have interviewed as well uh, 12 able-bodied spouses or partners, so nine men and three women. The individuals with a mobility impairment who were in the interviews use wheelchairs and are capable of speaking apart from one. There is no consensual definition of couples in French sociology. Thus, we allowed the interviewees to describe their conjugal and romantic lives in a broad and intentionally subjective manner. Most often, we will refer to cohabiting couples. This is because, on one hand, this situation characterized the majority of the couples we have interviewed, and on the other hand, the need for human assistance has concrete implications for the daily life of the able-bodied partner in cohabiting couples only. All names we will mention are pseudonyms. So, based our, on our corpus of interviews, we identify several shortcomings in social policies targeting people with disabilities in France, as they often uh, fall short of adequately addressing the challenge this individual encounter in their sexual and couple lives. We will explain the issues associated with the adult disability benefits, then with the disability compensation benefits, and then the intertwin between both, highlighting how these issues differ by gender. And finally, we will mention three avenues for improvements in public policy. So uh, let's start with the adult disability benefits. In both of our studies, we encountered uh, individuals who were recipients of these benefits and they all had a significantly low standard of living. Interestingly, none of them explicitly mentioned the role of these benefits in facilitating their sexuality and couple life. We can assume that without these benefits, their situations might have been even worse. However, uh, it proved to be an insufficient response. More notably, during our studies, many individuals pointed out that the way this benefit was calculated created additional obstacles in their relationships. In France, social benefits are typically determined based on household's combined income, so the resource uh, thresholds for eligibility considers both the individual and their cohabiting partner's income. This can lead to problematic situations of economic dependence at various turning points of relationship. Entering a relationship, formalizing commitment through cohabitation or marriage, or separating. So, to illustrate, Thierry Bernard, an unemployed man with a visual impairment who was in an heterosexual relationship with an able-bodied nurse, explained how the decision to get married was challenging, leading him to feel a sense of dependence. I quote, We took a long time to get married, because now, as I am officially in a relationship, my income, my AAH, is also dependent on my partner's income. 
And well, since her income varies a bit at the moment, as she changed professions and so on, it's very complicated. This means that from one quarter to the next, I never know how much income I will have, in fact. So it's quite frustrating because I feel less financially independent than I did a few years ago. In fact, I feel more dependent on her. It's very, very complicated. So that's why it's difficult to plan for the future right now. And it's important to note that these obstacles impact both women and men. So this stands in contrast to the gendered pattern of dependency in the general populations, which predominantly disadvantage women. A uh, second set of uh, policy shortcomings relate to disability compensation benefits. So this social policy proves to be uh, efficient in very specific cases, particularly for women with disabilities who use it to compensate for certain household restrictions. In Osample, only women with disability expressed moral concerns about passing uh, on uh, some certain domestic tasks they find difficult to carry out uh, to their able-bodied partners. So I will uh, skip the examples because of uh, timing purposes. But overall, um, let's just say that uh, the gender division of labor shapes the range of domestic tasks that uh, these women uh, felt obliged to perform and disability compensation benefits allowed them to delegate these tasks to professional caregivers who were uh, typically other women. The potential of disability compensation benefits to address the lack of, the lack of access to sexual and relationship aspects uh, for example, funding for a caregiver to assist with masturbation is often overlooked. Masturbating and getting into bed can be particularly challenging for individuals with physical disabilities. This difficulty extends to both single individuals, individuals who are unable to masturbate and people in relationships where physical limitations make it challenging for their partner to assist them in getting into bed. However, the physical support required to address the restriction, restrictions encountered by people with mobility impairments falls at the crossroads of home care caregiving and sex work. The facilitation of sexual practices is not a task you can delegate as easily as house housework. Yet, there is no other profession available to perform those tasks apart from sex work. It is precisely this intersection that complicates the status of sexual surrogacy. In our samples, the subject is raised only by a political, politically engaged minority among male respondents. Uh, for example, um, yeah, I, I don't have to, I don't have time to develop my example. But uh, one of my uh, of the people I've interviewed uh, said that uh, the, the following. Um, uh, quotation uh, that um, uh, 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 yes um, um, uh, for example he said that uh, in Spain the the view of sexual surrogacy is different from France like in France sexual surrogacy is like paying for a sexual intercourse, intercourse while uh, in in Spain it's uh, someone that can help the person to uh, go in the bed or to masturbate. Uh, we finally found that the shortcomings of both policies sometimes intertwine, especially in mixed couples where one man has a disability and the woman does not. One, on the one hand, the Disability Compensation Benefits Program allows individuals with the mobility impairment to finance the salary of their caregivers, whether they are professional caregivers or family members. On the other hand, at the time of our studies, the method of calculating the adult disability benefits often led mixed couples to prioritize the involvement of the spouse of, as the primary caregiver. This creates an original configuration of dual dependence between partners. The able-bodied women provided essential human assistance to the partner with disabilities, but they fully relied on the men with disabilities for financial support, as they had to stop any professional activities. Uh, so one of my interviewees uh, has testified, but uh, for time reasons, I won't develop. So uh, to, con 
conclude in a couple of words, uh, let's mention two recent changes in French public policies, which suggest that uh, social policies actually uh, could be improved. First, uh, a decongregalized calculation of the adult disability benefit has been voted in 2022 and is effective since last month. So they should remove the adverse uh, uh, effects of reinforced economic dependence and can serve as a precedent for other countries who rely on the household level to calculate disability benefits. Uh, secondly, there is also an increasing awareness of family life in disability social policies and as uh, since uh, 2021 there is a new parenthood disability compensation benefits. Um, however, on a less optimistic note, as you may have observed, we did not include in any interview quotes from individuals with specific learning difficulties in the presentation. And this is because this group typically has limited awareness of the el eligibility uh, for social rights, so, such as the one we mentioned. So consequently, they almost never use them. And outreach, out outreach, outreach, well, anyway, <laughs> outreach approaches uh, may be beneficial uh, in addressing uh, this non-take-up and they have to be developed. Uh, thanks a lot for your attention.